Hello guys, this is Cyprian from FGFO and in this video tutorial we'll take a look at how to perform a steady state thermal analysis of a simple plate in ANSYS Workbench. So that will be my first tutorial on ANSYS so uh, I hope it will everything will go smoothly and my purpose is to show you the basics of uh, this software that is used a lot in the industry. So here I just started ANSYS Workbench so I'm on the educational version which is totally free so you can download it um, if you're a student for example can download it for free and I put the link on the description uh, of this video so let's start so now uh, you see you have several analysis systems and if you want more you have to click on view all and you have a view of all the type of analysis you can do in ANSYS now I'm doing a thermal steady state, so I will simply drag and drop that in the main window and the software will automatically create a system of different steps that are required to complete this analysis. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the engineering data. So we'll double click on that and by default uh, the structural steel is used. So we'll leave that like that for the moment but we'll come back to it later um, second thing very important my analysis will be a 2d analysis so if you are doing a 2d analysis you uh, have to go in properties of the geometry and here you see you have analysis type 3d so you have to go into 2d uh, and this is necessary to do that if you don't do it and you hope that you will be able to to do a 3d and then change to 2d later on it's not possible so uh, don't miss this step it's very important okay now and now we have we will create the geometry so double click on geometry and ANSYS will open uh, the design modeler okay here's the design modeler and in the design modeler we will uh, do the sketch of of the plate so let's go in the sketching tab in which you see that you have all the tools to draw uh, this the sketch and here I will click on on the look at the face to get it on this type of view uh, I like to display the grid so I go in, in settings and display the grid okay and now before drawing I want to be sure that yeah the constraints are set to auto constraint uh, it's so you you have to do that so it will snap on the right places when you draw your rectangle and let's draw my rectangle so you see it snaps here uh, let's just let's just draw a rectangle any size and now I put some dimensions on it so let's yeah general okay you just have to select the edge and like that it will, it will put some dimensions now to modify the dimensions go here so uh, this one will be one meter and this one will be two meter okay make a zoom now if you want to dis to to move a bit dimension yeah you can do that okay now how do you go from uh, a sketch to an actual geometry so you can do that by going into concept surfaces from sketch like that and here you have to select one edge of the boundary and click on apply to select all the sketch and once you did that you have to click on generate to create the surface and now you have your part so you see that in the walk tree here uh, the surface body just appeared now you can hide the quote the dimensions to leave on the display now I just save that and I close the design modeler and we are going back to the workbench and now it's time to go inside the model so when I click on model, uh, the workbench will open uh, ANSYS Mechanical. 
then it will load automatically your geometry that you created. So the good thing about ANSYS is that if you change your geometry and you update, you can get your new geometry directly in this. Now you have several steps that will do. You have your geometry here, surface body, coordinate system. We have to mesh that first, and then we have to assign the boundary conditions and to solve all that. So uh, if you simply update the meshing, so it will create uh, any type of meshing like that automatically almost but you see that there's uh, a little problem with this I don't know if uh, this is because of uh, this is because of what but the display is a bit let me put the put it bigger in the screen like that it would be better so you see that it's not straight or it's a bit strange so in order to, to do it right, we have to do a face meshing. So we have to set up the face meshing, select the surface, apply, and once you did that, update. And you see now it's much better. Now it looks straight. Now if you want to change the number of elements on, on one face, we'll have to use uh, the sizing. So we'll have to set a size and you can either choose the, the surface or you can choose one of the edge. So here I will constrain the surface, apply and let's define a size of uh, 0 0.25 meter. Okay, be sure that you are in the meter unit, you can check that in the unit, your metric. Okay, let's update and see what it gives me. Well, it basically gives me the same thing, and this is due to to something. This is because the behavior here is set to soft, so which which means that uh, you can set something, but the if if the the software thinks that your size is too too big it will automatically decide to to make it smaller so here if you set it too hard it will simply obey the command that you gave and it will create the right size um, so now there's another thing you see that there are some warnings here saying some local face element sizes are larger than the global maximum size uh, this calls bad quality elements so we we obviously don't want bad quality element so in order to change that we have to go in the mesh sizing and we have to select we have to turn off the automatic mesh base uh, defeaturing so if I update, oh no, it's not about that, it's that, the curvature, you have to put it to adaptive. Okay, now you see the warning messages disappeared and I get a perfect mesh as I want it. Now let's assign the boundary condition to this model. So let's click on the steady state thermal here and you see that the bar here uh, changes in function of uh, in function of where you're clicking so now let's assign a temperature condition to uh, this edge so how do you apply to an edge you have to change the selection filter here to edge and you're not able to select the edge apply and set up the temperature so we'll set temperature of one Okay, um, and on these faces here, we'll apply a convection. Select, apply, and the film coefficient will be equal to 5, and the temperature is 1. So the film coefficient is the H coefficient. Uh, if you remember your, uh, your steady state thermal uh, courses, so the H coefficient is 5, 
Uh, now there's another coefficient which is important, which is the convection coefficient, uh, the, the conduction, sorry, the conduction coefficient k inside the plate. So to change this coefficient, uh, I have to look at the material because this coefficient is linked to the material that has been defined. So uh, if you click on surface body, you see that the material assigned is the structural steel. So what I want is to create a new material. So I click on new material and it uh, it brings me to the engineering data sheet. So new I will call new material. Could give it a better name, but anyway. And I have to drag and drop the isotropic thermal conductivity to this new material and set it to 1, the value that I want. Okay, now come back to the project and you have to update your model. So um, you have to refresh, yeah. Refresh the model and refresh the setup. And come back in your model. And now if you go in surface body you see that the new material appears, so now I assign this new material here. Um, now I only assigned a convection at a temperature to two of the sides, but in fact these two sides here there's nothing assigned to it, and that's because uh, they are actually uh, perfectly insulated. So I could just uh, assign a perfectly insulated boundary to this side, but it's it's useless to do that because this is the default setting. If you don't set anything, it will automatically be uh, perfectly insulated. So now that I've gone that, I'm ready to solve this problem. So let's click on solve and let's answer uh, perform the, the the mathematical solution with this with his algorithm. Now it's done. And if you go in solution information, you will be able to view uh, the result under text format. So here everything seems okay. N if you look, there have been two warning messages, uh, zero errors, so it's okay. Now let's look at the solution. So for that, go in thermal, click on temperature and evaluate all results. And now there's a small problem which is probably due... so I have one everywhere and this is probably due... oh yeah, it's due to the convection. Actually I did, made a mistake, it's an ambient temperature of zero, not of one. So if... okay, if the ambient temperature is the same than the temperature here, there's no point. So uh, I change again, let's solve again. Okay, now you see that I have a beautiful uh, temperature distribution which is uh, much better. So I have one, so you can use, uh, you can use the, the probe tool temperature you can use the where is it temperature oh here probe probe and you see that you can obtain a value at any at all the points of your model so when I go here the red value means it's uh, one and on this side I have gradients of temperature and uh, on this side I have zero. Uh, now, yep, that's it. So, if you click, you will put some small probes like that on your model. Uh, if you want to change the color or if you want to extend, uh, you can drag and drop like that very conveniently. The different colors you can, if you double click on the color, you'll be able to change the color. Um, and if you want to take a capture 
you can go image to file and then automatically make a screenshot and uh, save it on your on your computer so so that's it for this uh, first tutorial uh, thank you very much for watching if you like these video tutorials please check my blog fefo.com I have a lot more interesting knowledge uh, tutorials and articles about uh, not only FEA but also mechanical stuff uh, and my purpose is really to teach the basics of FEA and that engineers start to do it correctly so if you like it please join my blog my newsletter and you can also help me and share all that with your friends if you like it thank you very much and see you soon on the blog